beans are still caramelizing. They can stay in there a little bit longer. It's time to put our first pie together. So I'm dusting the peel with lots and lots of flour. These pizza doughs were made yesterday and were sat in the fridge overnight and then I made these little eight ounce pizza balls uh, a couple of hours ago and they've been coming up to proofing uh, indoors and coming up to up to room temperature. Now I made this dough out of, out of uh, Italian pizza flour dough, uh, pizza flour and the Tipo double O flour, but any bread flour will do. And I didn't add any oil or honey to this, it's just flour and water and yeast. And you can see it doesn't really need the flour, but it doesn't really need the honey or oil to make it soft. It is so flexible and relaxed. With bread flour, I like a little bit of oil and honey in the mix just to help the flour soften up. So I have to be very careful with this dough, it is so soft and it sticks very easily. But there we go, I think we're ready to add some toppings. And we'll just keep it very simple for our first pizza. A little bit of tomato sauce. There is a traditional way of making pizza, including the dough, um, using the, the Tipo double O flour and no oil or, or honey, but I don't mind using a little bit of oil or honey, oil or honey. Um, it depends on the dough and I don't mind mixing in a little bit of a whole wheat as well. It depends on the occasion and what you're trying to do. But um, yes, it's just a bit of sauce and uh, we'll put a, little, a few bocconcinis around the edge. If you go Mr. Wasp. Not too much cheese, don't want to overburden it. What will happen is, is the if you put too much on, the, the top will, will cook too slowly while the crust will cook straight away. Because it's being cooked at, at every angle, underneath and from radiation on top. If I wanted to make a, a more complex pizza toppings, I would make the dough a little bit thicker so the dough would cook more slowly. That would give time for the top. Just a little bit of parmesan. So sauce, three cheeses, a little bit of oregano on top, and a little bit of rosemary. And then just cut that off with a little drizzle of oil. Here we go. Great. So, our pizza's ready. Now we need to get the fire ready. Ah, we forgot to add some onions and garlic to our pizza. We'll do that now. So the onions and garlic are just about perfect. I'll quickly take this over to the table. And let's get our few onions. Not too many, just on the pizza. the garlics in the middle. Okay, ready. Now, the fire. I use a short rake just to push the fire to one side. So that set the fire off again, so I'll just let that settle down again. and do a final brush, manual focus, to remove the 
reaction. Yeah, the whole entrance is, uh, you can see it's getting white. Whitened. Well, the oven is ready. We have brushed the ashes to one side. There's still a bit of a flame, but that's okay. And uh, our temperature in there on the oven floor is 750, and the ceiling it is 780. So we could go hotter. We could get it up to 900 if we pushed it, but this is this is fine for our our pizzas. It'll take about three minutes to cook this pizza. Now it's the dough around the edge is rising up and the bocconcini is beginning to bubble. I think I need to get in there and just turn it around. Yep. Nicely on the, it's cooking nicely on the far side. And you can see it's, you might be able to see it smoking a bit. Again, that's just the flour from the underside just burning off. Ah, look at that, just bubbling away on top. Brown on the side. A few little burn points there, and underneath, whoa, it's perfectly crisp. What a great pizza. Let's let's cut this up.